thank you chairperson for kind words we have with us dr sandeep suri you can be there for the as a moderator and the report here you can be also there on the desk if you want first of all thanks the organizing committee and scientific committee for this opportunity and as being a part of organizing committee and diabetes india secretary as we have today our inauguration right at 4:30 so slightly we reduce the timings for the lunch and that may be an uh, issue for many of the delegates because we kept the lunch time between 12:45 to 1:30 and because we have to finish by 4:30 sharply and we have our inauguration by our honorable minister dr jitender singh who was founder of this diabetes india organization for 25 years and who himself uh, given a consent to be as a chief guest for our inauguration what i am going to talk in this dreadful path is that diabetes care actually we are moving from basic glucocentric approach to a prevention complication approach and we are moving from our diabetes care to metabolic care just day for yesterday when i was talking with sanjay kalra he told me just that rishi cares aims all india institute of medical science they are introducing only on metabolic medicine a super sub specialty so i mean it will become a specialty or a sub specialty in our country maybe in near future but we physicians who are treating diabetes we are actually metabolic physician what we are treating is just not the glucose we are treating many more things other than glucose control also so in this next 15 minutes i'll be little faster because we know that how we are moving from glucose centric approach to prevention complication approach and i'll be talking of a diabetes care should become more of a in a holistic approach as a metabolic care so let me talk with the start with a routine case this is a a garden variety of type 2 person who comes to our clinic a type 2 diabetic patient with a 53 year old hypertension on a regular smoker and bmi is 29 so these are the reports and i'm sure we all would like to treat this patient with a good control of a1c good control of cholesterol and many more things which we do in our diabetic patients but what we don't do that i'll be talking in next 15 minutes and that is very very important as we are moving from diabetes care to metabolic care this is a very complex slide which just talk about the consequence of complex network which involving multiple organs and biochemical pathway so i mean somewhere the insulin resistance is responsible for nfld nfld is responsible for you know high triglycerides so you know all these things are interconnected when you want to get many reports in the patient's uh, system you understand that actually it is a metabolic derangement in the overall system and person is having nephrol low vitamin d central city hyperglycemia this is what we used to call a metabolic syndrome also so this is a metabolic state of a type 2 diabetic patients and multiple complex uh, network involving multiple organs and biochemical pathways which are there i'm sure this we have seen multiple times ada esd guidelines but when we are concentrating on ada person centered approach for type 2 diabetes it means that cardiovascular risk factor and it is the medication for cardio renal protection also so in circle if you see it is just not the glucose centric approach or only the glucose is to be controlled so we have to have a cv risk factor screening and surveillance now this is very important as i had shown you the patient we forget some time for the central obesity we forget some time patient to smoking cessation we may write it but i mean that requires lot of education because we want to prevent that person from dying from the cardiovascular problem blood pressure lowering is important lipid lowering as today morning when we were listening with dr pc manoria in his diabetes india honor lecture that it is just not that that time what is the ldl cholesterol it is the cumulative effect of ldl someone is at the age of 20 and then at the age of 40 when you are writing him lipid lowering agent even in last 20 years when his lipids remained high that is also responsible for many of his complication which he is going to have the anti thrombotic agents when we have to write and very important as we know that about the smoking cessation so a comprehensive approach for reduction in diabetes complication as per ada 2023 guideline it is the glycemic management we all know it's a bp management lipids 
agents with cardiovascular and kidney benefits. They are the CRM, that's cardio renal risk management. We all know the ABCD approach. I'm sure uh, uh, before few years from UK, again, Indian origin uh, based endocrinologists had come out with the idea of ABCD approach, which is A for A1C control, B for blood pressure, C for cholesterol and uh, these were the three which he has asked and D for drugs which is the original which uh, me and Dr. Sanjeev Fatak from Ahmedabad we have written a one paper that it should not be only ABC approach we should have slightly more it is D for diet which is very very important and then E is for exercise definitely so D in E everybody will agree the F which is very important is follow up and what we are missing in our country is the follow up. I mean, you may teach at the time of diagnosis of the patient with everything, but the person is not following up. Where the co-author was also Dr. Dharmendra Panchal, who is sitting here. So this the F was for follow up, and the G we forget sometimes the general health of the patient. And this is what A B C D E F G H approach which we have made, and this is primarily for diabetic educator who is sitting outside your clinic can have. Uh, this discussion with the patient about the ABCD EFGH approach. So it's time to move from glycemic based diabetes care to metabolic care based approach. So I mean we are moving from a just a glucose control approach to a metabolic care. So when we have to see the liver, we have to see the heart, we have to see the kidney, we have to see the body weight, we have to see other lifestyle modification or modifiable factors like smoking cessation or central obesity or the exercise which all are needed for that. Diabetes in liver had become a big topic. Now it is like every time whenever in diabetes conference we have a dedicated symposia, dedicated meeting and now with diabetes in liver a interest group we have created in our Diabetes India where more than 100 physicians across the country had become the part of this diabetes interest group uh, of diabetes and liver only. We know that uh, a fatty liver uh, is more common with the persons with obesity, persons with diabetes and persons with uh, metabolic syndrome. 30 to 66 percent people with type 2 diabetes have NFLD. While those who don't have diabetes still the population is having nephrol and that population is almost like 25 percent but it further increases so it means all these metabolic problems in a person may come like i always tell or educate my patient who may have a diabetes or a um, uh, obesity we explain the patient that now you are sitting in a in a train which you have already these different metabolic pro problems are there but which station will come in your train you don't know i mean all stations are already there somebody may develop nephrol first somebody may develop uh, hypertension somebody may develop cardiovascular disease somebody may develop first diabetes somebody may develop other complication of diabetes straight away so i mean these all stations are there here if you want these stations should not come it's a primary prevention you have to you know modify all your risk factor and uh, modify you such a way that you prevent all these complications so type 2 diabetic patients with nephrol is also an increasing risk the best thing is FIB4 score now we all started calculating EGFR now I can say in diabetes India any delegate who is coming we are measuring now EGFR we are so much so that even our lab started giving us the report not with the creatinine they also started giving us the report for EGFR and now this is the time and this is the time that every one of us when a patient comes let us do FIB4 score for each and every person who is coming to your clinic and this will be a change from your glycemic management to a metabolic care. Now each and every patient we should think of FIB score it is you can download an app also we are doing SGPT SGOT for almost all your patients do SGPT SGOT simple the platelet count the age of the persons you know it and you calculate a FIB score it can be calculated very easily and I think this should become a routine uh, assessment for each and every person who is coming to your clinic whether he is coming for obesity, diabetes, nephrol or, or for any other metabolic problem and this patient will come in an intermediate risk. So from mild to uh, low risk to intermediate risk I think we physicians, we metabolic physicians, we diabetologists, we endocrinologists definitely treat because the treatment for this is definitely the lifestyle modification. It's not like that he is in having advanced or high risk for nephrol or high risk for cirrhosis. The similar, the diabetes, overweight and obesity. I was the past president of Indian Obesity Society. Indian Obesity Society
vicious cycle of an unhealthy lifestyle. And again, it requires a lot of lifestyle modification along with some new drugs which are now available in our country also for managing the obesity too. And we know the Asian Indian phenotype that may not be obese as far as BMI is concerned. It may not be the BMI of more than 25 or 27 for many of our patients, but it is the central obesity. It is the abdominal girth. I can say uh, here that almost all those who are sitting here, maybe 10% of them may have a normal abdominal girth. Actually, the abdominal girth normal means more than half of your height. If your abdominal girth is more, it means it is abnormal. So more than 90 centimeter for more of the female, male and most uh, for female it is more than 80 centimeter. It means we have a central obesity and that we also know as a thin fat Indians. Even if you do the DEXA or you do the BCA, you will find that abdominal obesity or the visceral fat percentage is very, very high. And we all know about the YY paradox, the two guy, one from India, other is from UK based. Both of them have similar BMI, but still the fat percentage with Dr. Yagnik was much higher in compared to the person who was based in UK. It means we Indians, even we are, uh, by birth we are thin fat Indians. So I mean, we have more fat or more visceral fat uh, in our, so that is the reason we become more prone to develop diabetes. Not only diabetes, all other metabolic complications which I talked about, dyslipidemia or nephalt or any other thing. The key factors implicated in pathogenesis for development of this thin fat phenotype in South Asian population, the reason is low birth weight. That's very, very important because we get premature delivery. We get the uh, not vaginal delivery. It's a cesarean section. Most of the time it is done on 8th or uh, early 9th month. The fat overflow hypothesis, this is already we talked that we are thin fat Indian, which is thrifty phenotype. Uh, whatever the calorie which we are consuming, we conserve it more maternal malnutrition, which is again a challenge. Uh, the female who is becoming pregnant, she is having already vitamin D deficiency, B12 deficient, protein malnutrition, and all these are reasons for them to have a low birth baby. Then the environmental factors and genetic predisposition. And this all makes us a normal weight obesity. It means a person may have a BMI only up to 25 or 23, but still the visceral fat percent of that person is very, very high. And that's the, these are the multiple factors. If we just work on all those things, probably we may have a primordial prevention of metabolic syndrome too. Managing type 2 diabetes and obesity, again, that same ADA ESD guideline, uh, the chakra which I had shown initially, that we go only with the tabular form that what therapy which they are recommending, but it's not the uh, recommending the therapy. It is the considering the managing the weight, which is very, very important, the lifestyle modification. And lifestyle modification, we just talk to the patient. I think it requires much more just by talking may not be sufficient only by 5 minutes or 10 minutes, we have to explain the medical nutrition and the physical activity. And my personal view is only normal walk is not a, a sufficient physical activity. Other than walking of 30 minutes or 40 minutes, there is a muscle strengthening exercise which is also been recommended. But for Indians particularly the abs or some abdominal exercise where this yoga and stretching and uh, this will help because that's very, very important. And that should be combined other than that muscle strengthening and regular walking. We should work on uh, this exercise also, which is very, very important. And considering the metabolic surgery, particularly those whose BMI is very, very high, we can think of even doing that also. That is part of even ADA ESD guideline also. The health goals for people with type 2 diabetes and with obesity, improving definitely the blood glucose, try to reduce by 5 to 10 percent. If we can achieve more than 10 percent, nothing like it, improving the quality of life, it is limiting the side effect of type 2 diabetes therapy, which is very important. Our patient should not develop the hypoglycemia or weight gain. Minimize the optimum use of glycemic medication, improving the comorbidities and cardiovascular risk in a person with type 2 diabetes. So our approach should be very holistic approach from improving blood glucose to improving the all comorbidities or cardiovascular risk factor. The treatment option for overweight and obesity in type 2 diabetes patients, we know that patient with a BMI normal and BMI is very high, we can think of even metabolic surgery, but most of our patients will come between 25 to 30 and there they need a lot of lifestyle modification and some pharmacotherapy which can help them for reduction of weight also, which are now available in diabetes patients like we are using SGLT2 and GLP-1 which is going to help. The management strategy as per RSDA 2022 guideline, we are also talking of maintaining healthy lifestyle, 
moderate calorie restriction, reduction of the weight by 5 to 10 percent, changing in a dietary composition which is very important. So just by, by decreasing the calories insufficient, we have to change the uh, content al also very important. The carb content of our diet is very, very high, which is also responsible for increasing hyperglycemia or post meal glucose. So we have to increase the protein content and decreasing the carbohydrate. As I told you about the physical activity, some resistant training exercise, changing in the behavior pattern and work on an abdominal or, or some exercise which can reduce the abdominal obesity too. For very obese person, as I told you, metabolic surgery can be a choice of thing also. The weight loss management medicine at present for diabetes, we use only state which is not very effective but still we can use with the person who is eating a lot of fats and GLP-1 analog and SGLT-2, but lifestyle modification with this combination definitely works very high. Diabetes and heart, a large proportion of patients, they develop heart disease, almost two-thirds of our diabetic patients, they are going to have heart disease, and we have to modify this cardiovascular risk factor from day one. The day when we see the patient, we have to start modifying these patients. Again, a non-invasive assessment tool, which is Q-Risk-3 score. So, I mean, the third thing, as we have est started estimating for each and every patient eGFR, similarly, for each and every patient, we have to do FIB score, and for each and every person, we should do the Q-Risk score also. Both are very easily available on your app also, you can download, and for each and every patient, we can do the non-invasive assessment tool for our diabetic patient for Q-Risk score for them, because primarily we can prevent them for developing cardiovascular disease. This is the ADA ESD guideline, which is again talking of look for the different cardiovascular risk factor, modify it, and with established cardiovascular disease, still the preferred choice is GLP-1 and with SGLT-2 inhibitor. This is what the ADA consists of. The hypertension, this is again a condition with diabetes, which is undertreated or the targets for hypertension and lipids in our patients, particularly from Indian patients, the data had shown that many of our patients are not having or achieving a tight glycemic, I mean tight blood pressure control and tight lipids control. Also, there is a recommendation, there is a guideline, diabetes and hypertension by RSSDI. There is a guideline by ISH also. We know that the patient should be started with ACE or ARB with a choice with adding of calcium channel broker and as and when required, even the beta blockers can be used also. So I'm not going for the details of that. The lipids, how many patients to whom you will find their LDL cholesterol is less than 70? Most of the patients, even they are on lipid lowering agent, the doctors try to keep it less than 100. Even less than 130, sometimes they feel that it's fine. They don't start the therapy also. And only 30 to 40 percent of our diabetic patient actually getting lipid lowering agent. And those who are getting lipid lowering agent, out of them, only 10 percent of them are achieving the targets. Even the patients who are going for post-angioplasty, their lipids who are at very, very high risk. Now, recently, Indian lipid guideline had come with a very, very high risk. Ideally, their LDL, we should try to maintain less than 55. So that is what we are not having. PC Manoria sir is here, who is a past president of CSI as well as API and very active in uh, all metabolic medicine society, whether it is RSSDI, Diabetes India, CSI, API. So the treatment goal for very high risk, not very high risk, very high risk less than 55, which is less than 50, but high risk at least it should be less than 70, where a diabetes with one other major ASCVD risk factor, he should be, his LDL target should be less than 70. There is a stepwise management, again I am not going in detail of that, but those who are above the age of 40, we should start them for this stepwise management and managing their LDL cholesterol for less than 40. The heart failure is other one very important condition that in our diabetic patients, many of our diabetic patients who develop heart failure even without develop acute coronary also. Maybe a long-standing diabetes, long-standing dyslipidemia, the patient is already uh, very less amount of physical activity is doing. 25 to 40 percent of patients with diabetes have heart failure. And this is again an under-recognized condition because we don't do their regular screening. We don't send them for echocardiography. We don't uh, ask the patient positively the symptoms of this. And if they have, they are again at the higher risk of cardiovascular death as well as hospitalization for heart failure. Again, these patients can be initiated the therapy early in the course of uh, diabetes by SGLT2, which really helps them 
for decreasing hospitalization for heart failure as well as by decreasing their cardiovascular mortality too. Diabetes in kidney, this is what the last minute which is uh, cardio renal metabolic profile which is the diabetes in kidney again a major problem 50% of our diabetic patients. They develop again they can be uh, screened at very early and ideally the diabetic patients themselves should have a very tight glycemic control which is going to reduce their risk of developing diabetic nephropathy but those patients who develop at the early stage if we start them on a AC inhibitor or ARB along with SGLT2 inhibitor and now with the newer molecules like phenylalanine will definitely help them for further progression can be reduced. With this uh, I am just going with the, the case with the patients with to whom we have started the addition of SGLT2 one more to be added for that patient but what was more important a quit smoking and a lifestyle changes for that person was very very important uh, and that we don't do for many of the times even this patient who was started on a statin his LDL target had come as 103 that's not the target we have to increase it may not be 10 milligram it may be 20 or 40 milligram so it's a time to embrace the change from diabetes care to metabolic care it's just not uh, improving the diabetes control we have to uh, do a interdisciplinary education and try to prevent all the metabolic problems a person with diabetes which he can have with this i thank once again thank you uh, organizing committee and scientific committee for this wonderful opportunity thank you